take a minute or so and just begin to exalt him. Just praise him. Just something that he puts in your mouth. Just give it back to him. now together. Lord, we exalt your name over wars, over rumors of wars. We exalt your name over Israel. We exalt your name over Palestine. We exalt your name over Gaza. We exalt your name, Jesus. We exalt your name. We lift up your name over the hostages tonight. We exalt your name, Jesus. Jesus, we exalt your name over slander and speculation and accusation and just it's what our culture is doing today. Our culture is just hating one another and slandering each other and talking about each other. And there's just this, this spirit of rage in our culture. We exalt your name over rage. We exalt your name over hatred. We exalt your name over division and strife and and even over the church where there's scandal and speculation and accusation, we exalt your name, Jesus. You're still the Lord of your church. You're the head of the church. And if your body is sick, you, Jesus, the head, you're going to fix the sick places. You're going to fix the sick places. You're going to heal the broken places. And Jesus, you're not going to let a member tell another member, I don't need you. That's what your word says. The, head, the, 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 the members of the body should never say to one another, I don't need you. That's right. And so, Jesus, we thank you how you're healing all that. You're reconciling all that. And, Jesus, we exalt your name over stuff that we just think is going to be like cataclysmic. But, God, when you're done with it, it's just a storm that got stilled. That's all it is. It's just a storm that you told to be quiet. So, Lord, we thank you that our boat's not going down. Come on. We thank you that we're not going to sink. We're not going to drown. Thank you that the church, God, you're going to, Lord, you're going to make the church triumphant. God, you're going to make the church a radiant bride. You're going to help us, Jesus. So we, we exalt your name over the church. We exalt your name over the church tonight. We exalt your name, Jesus. We exalt your name over our family. Over the sick, over the broken, we exalt your name, Jesus. We do. We just we just lift you up. Because you're with us, we're not going to fear. So we just exalt your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, we exalt your name over the nations. We exalt your name over the nations. We just pray for missionaries right now. God, just give them power. Give them divine power. Give them encouragement tonight. Strengthen the missionaries across this globe. Help them not to despair. Help them not to give in to fear. Help them not to believe the lies that are swirling in their heads, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. We just cry out for our missionaries. Come on, you pray something for them. Jesus, these people matter. The gospel is supposed to be preached to the ends of the earth. And so, come on, make missionaries fearless tonight. Put your angels around missionaries. And Lord, expand. Lord, sometimes it looks like it's just like a snail's pace. 
the gospel just goes like a snail's pace. But God, show us, help us to see in the unseen realm that it, it just happens to be that the person they're ministering to right now is the, is the next Billy Graham of that nation. It's the next Paul Apostle to that nation. And so help us to believe that little is much when you're in it, Jesus. Little is much when you're in it, Jesus. Help us to believe that tonight, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Look, it, sometimes it feels like we're, we're not. It feels like we're like a snail here. And yet, God, I just thank you for, for people around us here, Jesus, that are here tonight being baptized Sunday, that yeah. you, you, you led us into their path this summer. You, you, you reconnected us with people this summer, Jesus. And now, Jesus, they're here worshiping and praising you, Lord. And so the devil's a liar. Come on, just tell him he's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. So Jesus, just I just feel like we're in the family room tonight. We're in the family room tonight, Jesus. We just keep hearing that, Lord. So Jesus, minister to your family tonight. Minister to your bride. Jesus, minister through us, God, tonight. Like there, for us, Lord, there was no question where we would be tonight. We had to be on this wall, God. We had to be here. We had to be praying and praising and singing, God, to you because we just know, Jesus, there's, there's no better place than in your presence, Jesus. There's no better place than being with you, Jesus. So we bless you.
think tonight, I just feel tonight that I just keep hearing the Lord tell me to lead us this way. I just feel it clearly that, that tonight our, our main prayer is just the, the it's not selfish. We, we Holy Spirit keeps us praying outward as much as we can, praying for the world, praying for nations, praying for the lost. But but I just feel like this weekend we're, we're having baptisms, we're having family come. I know families coming to watch family get baptized and don't know the Lord. And, and um, I, I feel Holy Spirit just wants us to pray for family tonight, to just lift up one more prayer. Amen. Lift up one more cry. Jesus, touch our families. Amen. Heal our families. So let's just get a posture of prayer tonight for this. Just however you, wherever you want, however you want, but just begin to lift up the, the burden of the Lord on you for family. And, and I'll just pray out a little bit over, but just lift up your heart to Jesus. And let's just lift up family that need Jesus. I I do, I agree um, uh, with you tonight for God to just like, uh, it's, we, God helps us even know how to pray. But, but so many times we've prayed for things. and then, But recently I've been praying mostly for my lost family. Jesus, pour your kindness on them. It's your kindness that leads them to repentance. And so we pray that, don't we? Lord, just show kindness and mercy. It's, it's the kindness of the Lord that brings people to repentance. And I, I, I agree with Debbie R. prayer for her, her daughter, that God would use all this to just just captivate and capture her daughter and just just get her heart and so just press in for a moment and lift up Jesus just it may be a spouse that just needs revival it just needs fire just needs an encounter it may be a child just lift them up just lift them up to Jesus Doesn't matter how many times we've prayed, there's always one more prayer for them. There's one more prayer. God, move tonight, Jesus. Awaken, God, the dead. Awaken the spiritually dead tonight, Jesus. Encounter, Lord. We pray for encounters tonight. We pray that, Lord, as you bring people to the very end of themselves, Jesus and what they can do, they would see you at the very end of themselves and they would find you, Jesus. Yeah, come on. Jesus, break off the deception that clouds them, that makes them feel like everything is okay. Jesus, that false security, God, break off that false security, that that sense of confidence in their flesh. So the demonic aspect of it is that you have plenty of time to get things right with God. And so we just pray against that, the, the lies of the enemy that want to that want to lull people to sleep spiritually. We pray, God, five alarm fire tonight. Come on, five alarm fire, Jesus. Wake people up. Wake people up. Wake people up, Jesus. Wake them out of their stupor. Wake them out of their hangover. Wake them out of that darkness, Jesus. Come on, we pray for five alarm fire tonight, Jesus. Just wake them up, Jesus. Wake them in the, in the middle of the night, Jesus, with a sense of awareness of their need for you, Jesus. Come on, Lord. Draw people by your spirit. Draw people with your cords of love. Draw them to repentance, God. Bring them, give them, the, Lord, give them godly sorrow that works repentance that leads to life, Jesus. Hear our cry for family, Jesus. Come on, family revival, Lord. Come on, revival in our families, Jesus. Revival in our homes, Jesus. Revival amongst our kids. Come on, Jesus. Help us to stay on the wall, Jesus. It's not enough to say that we have good kids. Good kids don't make it to heaven. Jesus, we cry out, Lord, break up that mentality if we have good kids. Jesus, we want God kids. We want kids that are marked by you, Jesus, not nominal. I don't see nominal in the Bible, Jesus. I see fire or nothing. So we pray, send fire tonight, Jesus. 
Send fire on the hearts of our kids, Jesus. Revive our kids. Revive our children. Revive brothers and sisters. Revive family members, Jesus. Come on, we may be praying for moms and dads. Revive moms and dads that are dead spiritually, Jesus. Jesus, you used my dad to lead his three brothers to you before they died. There's there's, there's always opportunities, Jesus, to lead family to you, Jesus. My dad never quit. He never quit. In the last days of my dad's oldest brother, my oldest uncle, took out that little card of Jesus knocking on the door, and he just said, Buck, you know mom and dad are in heaven, and do you want to be with them? You got to know this guy right here. You have to know Jesus. And led him, led him to you, Jesus. He's with you tonight because my dad persisted. Come on, give us boldness with our family when we lack it, Jesus. Come on. Kai's getting baptized Sunday and his mom might come. God, draw her by your spirit. Draw her by your spirit, Lord. Just don't let there be any walls. Don't let there be any excuses, Jesus. Take all the excuses out of her mouth, Jesus. Come on, just cry with me. Draw Kim to you, Jesus. Draw Kim to encounter, Lord. Let her bring people with her that make her feel comfortable. And Lord, may they have an encounter with you, Jesus. Bind, we bind the enemy, right? We bind the enemy. We bind his lies. We pray you'll rebuke the devil tonight in her life. Let her walk into an encounter with you, Jesus. We just pray for Kim to have an encounter with you, Jesus, that will change her heart, Lord. Change her life, Jesus. Now lay your hand on someone if you would and just now, Lord, encourage them. Just fill them. Just pray for just a double portion of grace and just pray an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon them. Jesus, we pray for the body of Christ tonight. We're in the family room, and Jesus, we don't need drink, and we don't need food because you're our food, and you're our drink. And so, Jesus, we pray just as we lay hands on each on our members, Jesus, just fill them with the Holy Spirit. Just give them a fresh endowment, God, tonight. Wake like a stirring, like... May your, may your Holy Spirit come and just put fire in their bones again. If there's if the fire is waning, then just fan it into flame tonight, Jesus. Fan the flame into their hearts, Jesus. Fan the flame of first love tonight through the laying on of hands. Remove lukewarmness, Jesus. Pour out your spirit upon your body tonight. We come tonight to drink. We need, we need you, Jesus. We need you to pour your spirit upon us. So we just pray for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your people, God, tonight. It's the spirit of truth. It's the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We need the Holy Spirit. Spirit of discernment. Spirit of wisdom. Spirit of knowledge. The fear of the Lord. We need you, Holy Spirit. Be poured out upon your body tonight, Jesus. Be poured out, Jesus. Be poured out. Be poured out upon your body, Jesus. Amen. Pastor Chad, sing that out, brother.
receive you Holy Spirit just receive a fresh baptism Lord may the place shake tonight may, may the planet shake with the power of your spirit Lord that's in us hallelujah hallelujah amen let's give him thanks and praise for just meeting with us thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for hearing our cries tonight. Can we thank him? Thank you for hearing my prayers. Let's be like Jesus who prayed in Lazarus' tomb and said, thank you for always hearing me before even raising Lazarus. So, Lord, before we even see the dead raised, we say thank you for already hearing us and, and already working, Lord. In Jesus' name. Turn to someone. Come on, get up. Tell them, I love you. I need you. Go find somebody. Come on, go find somebody new. Go find somebody new and tell them I love you. I need you. Hallelujah. Let's, let's hear some announcements. Um, let's get some announcements in. As, as Michelle's coming up, let me say this. Um, we had a great night last night, didn't we, guys? We had the Fall Fest trunk, trunk retreat, and we had, like, I don't know, hundreds of people came. And there was a prayer booth, and people were praying over people. And today in the noon prayer room time, I, I looked back, and there was this lady just weeping in there with her child. And she walked out after the prayer time, and I went out after her to see who she was. And she said, y'all prayed for me last night. Hallelujah. And she's in a battle. She's in a battle. We prayed for her and asked her to come back tonight. You know, Holy Spirit has to do that. But, but um, yeah, she's in a crisis and needs, needs God and needs in, intervention and all that. And so, but hey, you know what? We were out there and there's one, right, that came to pray today. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Well, good evening, everybody. You guys know how to tithe, so we're going to just move on. Baptism Sunday is this Sunday. 
Very excited, yes. Praise the Lord. Oh my gosh, does it really fall back daylight savings time? Oh, okay. Well, turn your clocks back. So <laughs> make sure you do that. Don't trust your phone. And if you need to call 817-844-1234, do that. I still do it to this day. Thanksgiving potluck is coming up Sunday, November 19th. That is going to take place from 5 to 6. There is going to be a sign-up available. It will give you the quantity of what we need. We're asking that whatever dish you bring feeds at least 10. So if you want to bring double, let's do that. Amen. We love you guys. Yeah, and so listen, that Thanksgiving dinner, um, I, I forget. Lord, help me. I forget whose idea that was. I think it was Michelle's. Was it yours? No, it wasn't mine. No. Uh, but it's, it's a fun time to fellowship with all of the church because it just takes up this whole thing. And so it's a great way to get connected. Amen? So let's do that. And I, I feel like I'm supposed to say this for whatever reason um, to, to encourage us that when we feel like we're, we're doing something and it's not producing, like we don't think it's producing a lot of fruit. Like, you know, we go out to the um, apartments a lot, you know, and we do the outreaches. And I remember this summer, you know, it was really hot, guys, if I got to tell you. Um, and Charlotte, what, what's the apartment that you stay at? What was it? Flats at Hanley. It's only been like 100 names. Was that this summer or was that the spring? Summer. It was Easter. That's right. I knew it wasn't just unbearable. That's why I was thinking it must have been. It was like, I, I remember it not just being like killer heat. And I, I just remember, Charlotte, that we were built, doing this whole big thing. Michelle was up there being Michelle. I'm so glad I don't have to do that kind of stuff anymore. I had to lead it in the past. But um, and I remember just the Holy Spirit just drawing me to come back over and keep talking to you. Because you'd come to our church before the pandemic. And then the pandemic came and kind of got us all disconnected. And I just remember Holy Spirit of all these people just keep drawing my attention to you. And to, I went over there and just kept talking to you. And we a little bit, and, and Charlotte is being baptized Sunday, and two of her kids are being baptized Sunday, and whenever you, like, whenever you hear something that you know God told you to do, and it seems small and insignificant, do it. If it's just show up to that little thing, little is much when God is in it, and it's not wasted, guys. And so I, I just know that um, Jesus sent us to that apartment to reconnect with you. And they have a whole row on Sunday. You can't have their row. They have a whole row. And I think a couple of your kids are being baptized Sunday too, maybe. Two of them, see? So, Amen. So we praise the Lord for that. And, and listen, it's going to be outside. And don't freak out. It's 75 out there, and we found this thing that you can put in the water that heats it up. It's, it's not a hair dryer. It's, there, it's, this, it's this thing that you put in the water, and it, and it heats up 300 gallons. And so it's going to be, like, nice. It's going to be because because some of us needed to suffer. Jesus wanted to <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So I think there might have been only two or three baptisms, and now I think there's like five or six or seven or something like that. And so so it's it's growing. It's growing. Not because of the heater, I'm just saying because the word's getting out and people are gonna be baptized. And so yeah, amen. amen. That's awesome. It really is. All right, so so the time we have left. Um, is it choir tonight? Yeah. So Sunday's going to be big. We have choir, communion, baptism. And so the Lord's already given me a word about baptism. And 
And it's weird. I have like a whole baptism message file, and I can't ever re-preach anything, ever, <laughs> ever. And so everything's fresh. And so the Lord was giving me some really neat stuff about baptism that will help all of us refresh our baptism. And if you like the water, you think it's warm enough, you want to get back in, you're welcome to <laughs> after the other ones uh, do theirs. All right, listen, let's do this. Let's, let's take a, uh, our Bibles and just turn to First Timothy. And um, Lord, Lord deposited this in my spirit uh, today. And um, I just think it's really sweet. I think it's really good. It's timely. It's a lot of things. Um, 2 Timothy 4, uh, 16, but that's not it. Hang on here. Maybe I, maybe I meant first. <laughs> yeah, 1 Timothy 4, 16. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, listen, I need, to, I need to focus you for just a minute. Um, we are witnessing right now, like, right this moment, we're witnessing... Wars and rumors of wars, but not just like in Ukraine or everywhere else, but we're witnessing wars and rumors of wars in the heart of the Middle East in Israel right now. And we, Israel would be ground zero for prophecy. And we're now, in the, there's this absolute, like it, the conflict could escalate and take in many more countries just like that. We know that, don't we? That it's not just, you know, the Palestinians and the Israelis, but that it could instantly be Hezbollah and Lebanon and Syria. And if Iran shoots anything over at Israel, America is going to be in on it. And then you've got maybe China and Russia. And it's like, boom, just like that. And it's all happening right there. Meanwhile, over here, we're witnessing demonstrations all across the country that if you listen, and I, I haven't said anything about it, um, I try not to, to get involved in certain things, but I was with my son in Michigan, and his room looks out at the president's house of the Michigan University campus, and there were 500, I mean, we were sitting there just, you know, hanging out in his room, and all of a sudden we hear these chants and these shouts and these screams, and we looked out, and there was this, like, 500 protesters that had the Palestinian flags, and they were in front of the, the uh, president's house. And, you know, it was all peaceful, thank goodness. Um, um, but they started shouting something um, from the uh, river to the sea. And... That language from the river to the sea meant that, that what they were calling for was the extermination of the state of Israel and, to, and the extermination of Jews. And it's just like all of a sudden, you know, we, we watch all these movies and we think those, those ridiculous Germans, how did they not know and how did they not stand up and how did they not, you know, how all of a sudden they, they start rounding up the Jews and putting them in in these places, and, and no one said a word, and yet it's happening again. Because it all starts off with rhetoric. Like back before there was a bunch of the violence taking place in, in Germany, they just started making the, the Jewish people on their businesses just put the Star of David so that the German people would know that that was a Jewish-run place and they wouldn't go in and buy anything. So it just starts off by, by making them a certain people. And so all of this is happening. Meanwhile, the Bible tells us that there's going to be like tons of deception, right? Jesus, that's his first thing in Matthew 24 is watch out that you're not deceived. That's the first thing he says. And then he starts talking about all this stuff in Matthew 24 about the last days. But this first thing is watch out that you're not deceived. And here as we stand, the largest American Christian church, the, the, the largest church in America the, the pastor, the leadership have inched major closer to full acceptance of gay marriage. And this guy is, is, is Andy Stanley. It's Charles Stanley's son. And this literally, there's this open door now to full acceptance of that um, 
like I was sharing Sunday, on the, with the language of compassion and affirmation, that that's what Jesus would do. And so here, this is actually happening. Accusations, if you are on social media, accusations now are flying at everyone. There's more noise than there's ever been. Um, Jesus says in Matthew 24, 10, that in the church, people will betray and hate each other. And there are church people at each other's throats. If you just, if you're watching like I do on social stuff to get a sense of what's going on, there's a spirit of betrayal. Jesus is telling us it's a playbook in Matthew 24. And literally there's this, there's like accusations being thrown at leaders and different people. And there's just this spirit out there, guys. And Jesus just says, but the people who stand firm to the end, they'll be saved. And so we're entering November. We're in it. And typically what happens to a lot of Christians is we just get enthralled with Christmas and obsession about all that the entertainment. And you can do that. But if you do that, there's a cost. Come on, church. There's a cost to the obsession that we call Christmas. And this whole season, there's a cost if we... Just lose ourselves into everything that this season becomes about. We, we, I'm I'm just saying, it will pull you off the wall of intercession and watching and praying. And if you're not, if it's not care, it'll pull you into the same spirit that's in the world. So I'm just warning you that we should be careful how we step through this season. And maybe not all of it's for us. And some of it we push back and say, hey, listen, you know, this is just nostalgia, and this is just drawing me into a fantasy, and I need to stay sober. Come on. And so I believe for the people this season who dedicate yourself to waiting, to listening, to watching, to praying, to gazing upon the word, you're not going to be taken off guard. Amen. Amen. And so remember, Jesus said that that it'll it'll be like it was in the days of Noah. And and I I went up back and looked at at, at 24 today, Matthew 24. It says, it says, they knew nothing about what would happen. And so I'm just saying that can't be us. That can't be our generation that knows nothing about what's coming because we are enamored and enthralled in all of the trappings of this American dream And we're all caught up in all the drama and all the accusation and all the noise and the deception and blah, blah, blah. And Jesus just says one thing, and this is what I'm trying to focus in. You can go to it later, but in in, in Matthew 24, verse 42 and 43, he just says really clearly, he says, watch, keep watch. You can go look at that later. Keep watch. He just says it a bunch of times, but he just says, keep watch. Amen. So that's what I think, what prayer meeting, what prayer room, what this does is, listen, it just pulls us back a little bit and says, listen, I'm going to stay focused on you, Jesus, because I don't want to be one of those that betray and hate. And how many know that our tendency is we could be drugged right into betrayal and hate if we, if we give too much wind? Hurt and deception and. I mean, to me, that this guy, the biggest pastor, can fall into this and have this big conference that, that had the speakers that were uh, LGBTQT plus affirming, just been like, like, five years ago, would he have thought that he would do that? And so, I mean, my job as your pastor is to say, hey, Jesus wants us to keep watch. But a praying church does. And so look at this verse because it's just one verse, but then maybe the whole, maybe we'll have just a second here to break down the chapter. But look what he says to Paul to Timothy. He just says, this is, this is my message to you tonight. If, if Jesus says keep watch, then what should you watch? If you're supposed to keep watch, this is the word tonight. What are you supposed to watch? Verse 16. Watch your life and watch your doctrine closely. It's not me saying it, Bible. 
Paul tells Timothy, and so it would be to us, two things you should watch, guys. Watch your life and watch your doctrine. Look what it says, closely. And then it says, persevere in them. So whatever you're supposed to be watching about your life and your doctrine, he says, watch it closely and persevere in your watching your life and doctrine closely. And look what it says, guys. This is heavy. Because if you do, you won't just save yourself. You'll save others. See, I'm just thinking how many guys, how many people this pastor potentially is causing to stumble right now because he wasn't watching his doctrine closely. Has he gone full-blown into this yet? No, but the door is wide open now. And so I don't want to be one of those that's not watching my life and doctrine because, guys, people are watching me. And if I'm not watching my life and doctrine and I start erring in ways, then I cause people to stumble, but so do you. And so it says persevere, and you'll save both yourself and those who hear you. Amen? So um, just a couple of thoughts about this. Watch your doctrine. I think we hit that pretty good Sunday. Is, is, it just boils down to this. If it's not here, then we don't do it, guys. And if it is here, we fiercely we fiercely go after it. If it's here, we do it. If it's not here, we don't do it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And, and the doctrine is, stuff is going to be said about Jesus. I'm telling you guys this. And I'm, I hate to be the guy that goes, I'm telling you this, and I'm going to be proved right, but I keep having examples like this that I see in the news, and I'm like, what? I'm like, okay, I guess, you know, the Lord's been talking to me. And so because of the pull of the world to compassion, the notion of compassion and affirmation, all this language, we're, we're saying we'll, we'll depart from Scripture and from many passages that clearly articulate that issue of Scripture. We're departing for, from it because of the, the, the plea for compassion or whatever. And I'm just telling you, that if, it, if the Word of God tells us something to do or not do, that is compassion. Amen. I'm not letting them change the subject. I'm not letting them change the narrative. If it's in the Word, it's compassionate. If it says not to do it, it's compassionate. Amen. And so we should watch our doctrine. Don't let people say stuff about Jesus that's not in the Word. If Jesus, if, if, if Jesus didn't say it or Jesus didn't live it out or do it or the, the early church, then we, we just can't align with it. So watch your doctrine. Amen? Amen. Closely. Hey, come on. Persevere in it. Yeah. So keep going through it. Keep going through it. Keep saying, okay, Lord, I know this is what your word says. I mean, I've gone back over and over again saying, Lord, is this what your word says? I come back go, yep, this is what your word says. So watch it closely. And then what about your life? So, so in this passage, just real brief, I promise. First Timothy 4, it just says, the Spirit clearly says that in latter times, this is verse 1, I'm sorry, First Timothy 4. So this is like we just read the last verse. Let's read the first verse. Because here's the context. We'll abandon the faith and we'll follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. And, and I just, that seems real heavy, <laughs> right? Um. But, and I've said this passage, you know, it's like what it's going to look like is there's going to be guys standing up here and gals, and they're going to be teaching stuff, and you're not going to hear any growls or like any demonic voices. It's just there's stuff going to come out of here from pulpits that just aren't lining up with the word. And that's being taught by demons because the word, because it, 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 it won't contradict itself. But I don't think it's going to be so obvious. I don't think. I mean, this situation out here in Atlanta seems pretty bold and blatant and obvious. But I think there's going to be also a subtlety to 
he says, watch your life. And let me just, a couple of thoughts about watching your life. Look what he says here. Like, this is what maybe he says, taught by demons. Well, some teaching comes through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. And then look what he says that they're teaching. This is, they forbid uh, to people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth for everything. Look what Paul's, Paul's like really the moderating of this thing. He is for everything God created is good. Nothing is to be received if, if it is, re- and nothing is to be rejected if it's to be received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God in prayer. Amen. So I've already taken up too much time, but if you go to Colossians chapter 2, Paul just blasts the idea that you can't eat certain foods or you can't do this, you can't do that. Um, it's attaching, and I, I get real leery of, of pastors or churches trying to start pull back in all the Jewish festivals and all the, the the laws and bring them back into the church because it's like, are we starting to say, well, if you don't put the oil on your door or the scriptures on your door, then your house is cursed or something, you know, like this whole thing where you got to nail the, forget what that is, but they say, put that on your doorpost because the Bible talks about the Old Testament. We're the door, guys. And the word is in us. It's like, I'm not, I'm just telling you, nailing a bunch of Bibles on your door isn't going to keep the devil out of your house. If the Bible's not in your heart, it doesn't matter what you nail on the outside of your house. I'm just going to be that pastor that's just like eighth grade education, folks. You know, I just think it's simple, but everyone makes it so complicated and confusing. Come on. It's true. So watch your life. And here's what he's saying. Like, there must have been people saying, well, no, if you really love the Lord, you won't get married. Something like that may have been said. Or, man, you you know, that's sinful to get married. I mean, Jesus is coming. So stuff like that. Or, you know what? Like, and and I get leery of, of, I mean, okay, it's wonderful. People have these foods they won't eat or the diets and all those kinds of things. But when I start seeing people, like, it becomes sort of a a religion to them. I'm like, I'm a little leery of that. I mean, Paul, Peter saw the sheet came down. There was bacon on that sheet, guys. I'm sweating up here, and it's not, I don't know why, but it's just hot today. So, so here's what I think is being said about watch your life. Guys, listen, watch your life. Because there are people that can start saying stuff about food and about relationships, all this stuff, it sounds good, and it's starting to pull you into some kind of thing other than focus on Jesus. And Paul is like, listen, God, God created everything. Look what he said. Like, for everything God created is good. Nothing's to be rejected if it's, to be, if it's received with thanksgiving. Come on. That should be our mantra here. Oh, yeah, everything. If God's created, it's good. And we're just going to eat it with thanksgiving. And, and I'm not saying... I'm not saying Holy Spirit can't speak to you and say, hey, you know what? You shouldn't eat that anymore because the Holy Spirit's told me not to eat some things. But when we start making that a religion or attaching that to our salvation, we're getting sucked into stuff that I believe that we, well-meaning, can be sucked into things that takes us away from our pure devotion to Jesus and starts attaching things to our faith or what it means to be saved. And I'm like, I'm leery of that. It's like we had our fall festival last night. We're praying over people. We're loving people. I get home, and I open up my Facebook, and, and I'm, I'm you know, scrolling, and anyone that celebrates Halloween is not a Christian. I'm like, well, I'm in trouble. I guess I'm in trouble. And that's what they said. They're a friend of mine. Oh, they were a friend of mine. No, I'm joking. I don't, even know. I, don't even know. I don't even know who it was. I'm like, I got friends like that. And I just think, wow, what, what a legalistic attitude. That's what he's saying is like, man, we can, we can just abandon Jesus and run to a bunch of rules and laws and miss that last night, man, 
we were loving people, praying for people, enough that a girl comes today to noon prayer in tears because someone, well, we're, we're, we could have had this place darkened last night and just been home saying, man, we don't do that kind of stuff. And they'd have drove right by and never felt any love or joy. These, I mean, I looked at these folks. Most of these people aren't going to come right to our church right now, but they came there last night. And we carry Jesus. And Paul was like, man, those gods aren't gods anyway. They're, they're dead. They're nothing to them. These people were just wearing costumes, folks. We're not celebrating any kind of nothing. We're celebrating Jesus. It was family for us. And so I'm, I'm glad I'm a Christian and that that lady didn't talk me out of it. Who said that anybody that celebrates Halloween is not a Christian. It's the first thing I spread when I got home. I started laughing. I was like, well, I'm just glad I'm free. <laughs> Verse 4, everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it's to be received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God in prayer. Maybe what it's saying is some things that you eat, maybe you should read your Bible over it first, just in case, because it, there's nothing in that thing that's living. There's no life in that. So look, it says in verse 6, if you point out these things to the brothers, you'll be a good minister of Christ Jesus. So I did it. I'm a good minister. And then look at verse 7, have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. I think that's probably politically incorrect now. But old wives' tales, rather train yourself to be godly. And then here's the context of this. Look at verse 8. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Let me, let me hit this for just a second. During the pandemic, I got covid I know they told you that you wouldn't get it if you got the vaccines, but I did anyway, and I gave it away. But that's all the past. We've all been delivered and freed, and we're going to keep moving. But I had been sitting in that upper room in my house for a week, just sick, man, and I just miserable. And I called up my brother at the end, and I said, man, I... I need to get out of this house, and I need to do something. And so he and I conspired together and made the plans, and then we asked our wives for permission. <laughs> and we went skiing. I don't know if you knew that or not, but 27 years of my life. I, I, I hadn't skied in 26 or 7 years. My dad, my dad was a pastor in Colorado, and we skied when we were kids, and I hadn't done it since. And in the last 10 or 15 years, any time that I wasn't here, I was out traveling and ministering and doing prayer conferences or something seven, eight, nine, ten times a year, right? And you know what? If we're not careful and we go that extreme where we're just always doing the work of the Lord, that's off. That's off. And so I just said, man, I need to get out and go do something. And so he, you know, I had to drag him out, you know, because he just hates to go skiing. And so, you know, actually, I think I got off the phone and the car pulled up. <laughs> and, and we got in the car and we went and we skied. And here, here's what this saying here. So I, I don't know what the wives' tales and the godless myths were, but I think it's connected with physical training. Because it's connected here. And I believe that what, when it says watch your life, I, this is what I think it means. Watch your life from extremes. Like what happened to pastor? Oh, he's gone every weekend skiing now. He just took the winter off from church. See, from one moment, I need to go out and have a good weekend and just exercise and do some things to now it's my life. That's how quickly the pendulum can swing. And so we can be like, I need a vacation. And then we go to my whole life's a vacation. I need, I need some physical exercise to my whole life is what we see the world just chasing after. And so I think we're supposed to watch our lives 
from all of the voices around us that want to pull us into the extremes. But they're not extreme for Jesus, though. If you think about it, it's just extreme to be extreme, but it's never really about Jesus. Amen? So I plan on going two or three, ten times this year. I'm just joking. Um, But I know Holy Spirit will let me go and enjoy that, but it can't be the thing. You know what I'm saying? And, And so... Verse 11, command and teach these things. I just did. Um, so watch your life, guys. I, I'm, I, don't, aren't you? Do you guys pray this? Pray this with me. Pray, Lord, give me spiritual alertness and sensitivity to stuff that comes from people that sounds like it should be good, but I get a check about it. I don't mean that we're always living with all these checks, but that we're just like, that just... I'm, and we have to call everyone out for it either. I didn't go underneath there and go, you know, well, we witnessed to hundreds of people tonight and blah, blah, blah. Just leave it alone. She thinks we're not Christians, and that's fine. You know, she doesn't need a lecture from me or a big paragraph explaining it all. Um, so don't let anyone look down on you. Because you're young, it says, but set an example of the believers in speech and life and love and faith and purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not, this is for you guys, don't neglect the gift that's in you. It's been given through prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. So guys, let's let's just stay focused. Watch our lives, watch our doctrine. Look what it says, closely persevering in it so that you can save yourself and your hearers. Amen? Had a good word tonight? Amen. Jesus, Jesus, keep, keep us alert. Help us to stay alert. Help us to help ourselves stay alert. Thank you for the prayer room. Thank you for the prayer meetings. Thank you for this church that helps us to to keep our focus and not get distracted. And Jesus, we know that there's going to be voices that seem good, but the source is demonic and, and it's to get us off in our doctrine And it's to get us off in our life. And so, Lord, if there's something that you need us to eat or not eat, show us. But we're not going to build some kind of new religion around food or or relationships or marriage or anything like that. This we can we can find it in Colossians two. Paul deals with all that right there. And so, Lord, may we, may we trust your leadership. That's maybe the biggest thing. Trust your leadership. Trust your voice. Test it with each other if what we're hearing is right or not. And help us, Lord, each one of us to watch our lives and to watch our doctrine closely, persevering so that we can not only save ourselves but people around us. Amen? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you guys. Bless you. Come on up your choir. Sorry for taking a little more time, but I felt like I needed to.